G'day YouTubers and welcome to episode 2 in the offshore series North of Morton. I wondered how to go about presenting these marks. In the past I've always worked south to north, but this area is wider west to east than it is north to south. So I think this time I'm going to work from west to east, and within that band I'll work south to north. I've just got to find some way of keeping track of what I've told you about and what I haven't, and that seems fairly logical. So let's start looking at these marks. In this episode I'm going to cover the marks that the rectangle is around, flashing up on the screen there. It's probably going to be a bit of a shortage episode, but I'm trying to get some sort of division where I can just talk about the marks in logical groups, and these ones make one logical group. I'll zoom in on the group of marks in the southwest corner of that rectangle and just start with them. The southernmost mark is a shipwreck. It was called the Venus, and it ran aground trying to enter the Freeman Channel in 1855. The Granok and the Security were two ships that were involved in the rescue operation, but I haven't been able to find out much else about it. Not far away to the northwest is the Venus Bank. I sort of suspect that that might have been named after the ship after it wrecked there, but Again, I haven't been able to find anything to confirm that. If anyone happens to know, please put it down in the comments because I would be interested to find out. Now, I'll just say I don't think that this shipwreck has anything to do with the rather ribald little ditty about the good ship Venus. If you haven't heard it, it starts off, Aboard the good ship Venus, by God you should have seen us. The figurehead was a and if you want to hear any more about that, you'll have to look it up on Google. These next five marks are an extensive area of coffee rock reef. There's a lot of fish species can be caught here. I haven't fished it that much. I was always wanting to push out further, you know, go out to Hutchinson's, Roberts, Shoals, around the corner to Deep Tempest. It just didn't seem far enough away to me to want to fish it very often. Don't know why, because... When I did fish it, there was some decent fish there. I did have to burly up pretty well to get them, though. If I didn't stick a lot of burly in the water, I didn't get much. I don't know if that's still true today. I imagine it would be. So if you do plan to try these marks, make sure you've got plenty of burly with you, and don't be afraid to use it. Once you get them coming around, they fire up pretty good. But before you settle on a spot to fish, I do suggest you have a good sound around and just see if there's any one spot that's better than another. As I said, it's a very extensive area of coffee rock reef, so you've got a lot of choice there. And some days the fish will hold in one area, some days in another. Not necessarily on any of the marks that I've got here. And by the way, they're not my marks. I picked these up off the internet, however they are on the coffee rock reef that I have fished a little bit. There's two wrecks here that I almost missed putting in. That's the Orange Grove to the south and the Micaiah to the north. I don't have any information on these shipwrecks other than that they are shipwrecks and they're supposed to be in the general area of the marks that I've given you. It's quite possible that they were old ships and wrecked in the 1800s, so very likely there's nothing left of them if that's the case. Or it could be that the trawlers have gone down and there's something there to fish on. I don't know. I don't think I'd be wasting too much time looking for them because these sort of things tend to be general marks and if you're lucky enough to come across them, well and good. But because we don't have any information on what we're looking for, I just don't think it's worth spending any time on these. I put them in for the historical interest only. If anyone does know anything about these wrecks, I'd appreciate putting it in the comments, even if it's just a link to where I can go to look for some more information be much appreciated. I do like to keep up with the history of Moreton Bay. I'll just zoom in on these marks that are further to the north and we'll go through them now. I don't have a lot to say about these marks at the moment, but I will have more to say later in the video when we look at the bathymetry around this area. So I'll just give you the basic marks now and I'll talk about them in more detail a little bit later. In the meantime, I'll just put some music on and give you time to get the marks down.
finally, this group of marks over on the northeast side. I'll just start off with this one here, they're called Western Rocks. I got this out of a fishing magazine, as you can see if you zoom in on the description in Fish Tracks. I suspect that there was a typo in this mark and that it was meant to be over where I've got the others named Western Rocks. There's a huge area of Coffee Rock Reef over there. I suspect that this one belongs with them. However, I do know that there is some Coffee Rock near this mark. So I've left it where it is on the chance that it's been misnamed and instead of Western Rocks it should be North Rocks or East Rocks or something. Western Rocks are definitely over further to the west. But I'll come back to this one again later as well and just point out where the nearby Coffee Rock is if you want to go and have a look around there. Now this marks basically the shipwreck that isn't there. It's a mark for where the SS Power, I'm not sure about the pronunciation of that, was beached after it struck Smith Rock on the 25th of August 1909. They beached it there in order to offload the cargo and effect repairs, so it appears that it was replated and recovered. The ship itself was built in 1904, so it had a pretty short life before it ran into Smith Rock. But if we're right about it being recovered, then it went on to greater glory. Not a lot of information that I could find online about that. It was a cargo liner with a limited passenger section, and it was run by the British India Company, and did the run from the UK to Brisbane via Suez and the Torres Strait. Apparently the Queensland Maritime Museum Library has some more information on it, but I haven't been in there for a long time. But if I ever get back there, I'll definitely look it up. This next mark is for the Cleetwood, which is a 112 foot barge founded off Cape Morton in 1948 on the 17th of December. Given the size of it, the fact that it's metal, there's very likely something left of it, although I've never seen it. I didn't even know it was there until several years ago. I haven't been fishing up in that area since I found out about all these shipwrecks that were there. As far as I was concerned back in the day with the sounding equipment I had, if I saw something on the bottom, it was likely a boulder or a reef or something. I didn't have anything that was good enough to actually see the outline of a ship and say, oh, that's a ship. But also, no, I didn't fish in this close to the Cape, so I never would have seen this uh, particular wreck, even if I did go over top of it, assuming it is there, of course. But again, this is a mark that's in more for its historical significance rather than a fishing possibility, although given the type of wreck it is, it is definitely a fishing possibility if you can find it. The Young Australia is another wreck that went ashore on Morton Island in 1873 on the 31st of May. All the passengers were saved. It was a steamer that was headed for London and it left Morton Bay in fairly rough weather apparently and the exact circumstances of why it went aground are unclear from the reports that I've seen. No doubt there's a maritime investigation report that will give all the details but I haven't been able to find that online. Nevertheless we do know all the passengers were saved and from the information I've seen the ship was breaking up before they could offload any of the cargo. So likely all that was lost. Being that the ship was on shore, it was a steamer, it was in 1872, likelihood that any of it's left is pretty remote and it's not a fishing spot. Again, this mark is put in for its historical significance. And this mark here that circled rounds off the shipwrecks in the area. I have no idea what wreck this is. It may be one of the ones I've already spoken about with a different latitude and longitude assigned to it. It shows up on some maritime charts, but there is no further information on it, not even a name. So a lot of these old shipwrecks, the latitude and longitude reported by them is that that was given to the maritime inquiry that was conducted into the wreck at the time, but not necessarily where the ship ended up. Even if they have an exact fix on where the ship was hulled and started to take on water, with currents and depending on the depth of the water, if the water is deep enough, like out in the mid-Atlantic, the ship itself can drift for miles as it sinks to the bottom. 
So just having an exact fix on the ship when it went down doesn't mean to say it's anywhere near there when it hits the bottom. Also, just imagine the confusion and panic when the ship is sinking, depending on how rapidly it's going down, of course, but if it's going down fast, there's so much confusion and panic, I wouldn't put a lot of store in the accuracy of any fix that they give regarding latitude and longitude where it was actually sinking. All figures like this are certainly approximate unless you have a sounder shot of the ship and you've marked it on your GPS from that. Later on we'll talk about some wrecks in that general area that we do know for a fact are there, but probably not until a later video. I'll just run through some of the bathymetry in this area. As you can see there's a lot of structure on the bottom. A big reefy area running all the way from Roberts up to Hutchison Shoal. That's on the eastern side of the island. There's a bit of structure on the western side too, running in the same direction, but not quite so much. There's also a little bit further out from that reefy structure, running up through Roberts, uh, Flinders and Hutchinson's. There's also a big drop-off, just a little bit more to the east of that. And then there's quite a drop-off along the northern edge between those two. And that sort of sums up the structure that's in this area. I find that this blue palette here is the best for me to see exactly what's going on. You may find some of the other colours better, but for my eyes, I hope this one works the best. I'll just zoom in a little bit and let these bathymetry maps play through so you can have a look at the structure in the area without my overlays. I have put some of the marks up on these so you can get a bit of an idea of where the structure is in relation to the marks. Not all marks are on structure, or at least not on structure that we can see in the bathymetry. One would assume that they're on some isolated piece of structure that perhaps doesn't show up on the bathymetry. you really got to get out there and have a look. That's what we used to do in the old days in Dancer. Go out there, have a look in the sounder when you found some structure on the bottom, you stopped and fished. I'll just zoom in a little bit more on this northern edge, the drop off along the northern edge. I never fished that. When I had Wave Dancer, we used to head out to Flinders and Roberts and a little bit towards Hutchies. Never really got up to Hutchies. Always a little bit worried about fuel with two big engines burning the fuel and a rather unreliable gauge. Never ran out, but I was always concerned about it, so didn't venture any further than I knew we could go. I've got a circle flashing around the marks that I showed you earlier as the western rocks. I mentioned at the time that that's a large area of coffee rock out there. Well if you look over to the east southeast of that you'll see those round patches. That's surveyed coffee rock. Now I didn't know that was there at all but I have found that this survey is very accurate. There's other areas that it mentions coffee rock that I do fish and I know the coffee rocks there. So I do believe that the copy rock that the survey mentions is probably correct. It's not the western rocks, but it's another area that you should have a look around and see what you can find. I know it's not what I used to fish as the western rocks because even though I don't have GPS marks for the fishing area, I do know that we're pretty much due west of the northernmost tip of Cape Morton. The position along that line we got by referencing a second mark on Morton, but the key point I wanted to mention here is I know that that coffee rock is a bit deeper, further out from the shore, than the one that's marked in brown. There's also this other mark that I said I thought should have been over with the western rocks, and I think there's maybe a typo in the positioning of it, but there is also coffee rock near there. Just down to the southwest of that, there's a large area of coffee rock in very close to the shore. Again, I don't know that that's there, I haven't seen it myself, but the survey that I took these coffee rock marks from has proved to be very accurate in other areas around Morton. So that's another spot where you could go and have a sound around to see if you can see anything. Unless you're like me and you just want to get out into the, I don't know, the sexier fishing spots like Hutchies and uh, Roberts, Deep Tempest, those sort of places. But when the weather's against you and you can't get out there, sometimes just fishing in close off the north end of Morton is pretty good. And that's when I used to go for the Western Rocks area. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. I hope it's given you some spots to have a look around and maybe get some fish out there.
If you haven't already looked at the previous episode, do have a look at that because it is well worth dropping some pots for spanner crabs on your way out to any of these areas. I'll get another one of these videos up within the next month, hopefully getting a bit of fishing in in the meantime. Until then, good fishing.